Long ago, the stars twinkled and told a tale yet to come. A tale of despair for the present and hidden promise for the future. Such was written the fate of this little group of mountain dwellers. Yet steadfast they were in their ways, trusting in their own grandeur. Long ago, the masses assembled and were thus peered by scrupulous eyes. Timeless observers, capable of only singular power. Nay, a power to face the creeping, moonlit fingers that spelled doom. Yet steadfast they were in battle, for who else possibly could? Long ago, and for a time ill fate was thought dispelled, with faith in their warriors the people held stronger. With those thoughts, the fight to survive place aided. Yet victory was only seen in a future where all of time could be found. Long ago, evermore, power had called them here, and its echo would reach for many more. Of time-spanned lands they will be bolstered by unique strengths, yet here they would pull, seeking the enchanting call. Long ago, then, the critic would commit a sin, to build and give to land only to steal and take from life, a great prison fit for the indomitable spirit of its people. Yet here it would stand for many generations to come. Not so long ago, after those who rose and collapsed before calamity, it stood in defiance of time and awaited patiently, a people with a mind to make their strength the power of many. Yet now it will wake at the ring of the worthy. Such was the tale told on a starry night, a stubborn stand against prophecy, the tragic battle without end, a gambit against greater foe, a hope cast across time. Such was the tale of the great traitor thief, Balsakin. I'm Gasher, and today I'm going to be going over the poem that was posted in announcements, The Tale of the Traitor Thief Balsacane. I'm going to be going line by line and explaining the lore behind this poem. Um, so we start off learning that people used the stars as a method of prophecy, the stars very simply told a prophecy that was there would be despair in the future and promise after whatever calamity came. So we assume calamity is what emptied the town, uh, what drove everyone out, um, and then the prosperous times were when the players start to show up afterward. Uh, then we follow a group of mountain dwellers uh, that were attracted to the town by some magical force. Uh, these mountain dwellers were special because they had an, um, I'm going to quote this, a power to face the creeping moonlit fingers that spelled doom. Uh, so what we assume that this means is there are, these people had some way to combat whatever this big bad, the calamity, the encroaching doom uh, is that was unique to them. And this is significant uh, in a later part, and I'll explain why. Um, there was a time where the calamity was thought dispelled, people started to have more faith in their warriors. It says, with faith in their warriors, the people held stronger. Um, sort of a false confidence in their ability to fight off whatever um, the encroaching doom is. Um, and then we get to something significant where it says, of time-spanned lands they will be, bolstered by unique strengths, yet here they would pool, seeking the enchanting call. This shows us that there was some sort of magical force that drew people to the town. Uh, these 
the image below shows um, a set of disembodied eyes, which I interpret to be some sort of godly entity um, or higher power that is drawing these people to the town. We assume it's the town uh, because the picture shows the Pride Rock, which is very commonly like a symbol of the landscape of the town. Um, we see people converging at this place, which also helps the theory. Um, when it says of time span lands, they will be bolstered by unique strengths. Oh yes, I skipped a line. Uh, it says, this line is very important. It says, yet victory was only seen in a future where all of time can be found. The important part about this line is that we think where all of time can be found is a specific place, that place being the town. And this is supported later in the poem where it goes to talk about how um, people would converge in the town bringing their, like it says here, of time span lands they will be bolstered by unique strengths. Meaning that people come to the town over time, bring their technology, their influence, and their culture, and build up the town together. And then we, the players, will come along using everything that they built to be able to combat whatever the big bad is. And then in the second half, we get to the story of Balsacane. Um, very simply, he built the tower, and it is used as a container for the his people's ability to climb. It says, Long ago then, the critic would commit a sin, to build and give to the land, only to steal and take from life. A great prison, fit for the indomitable spirit of his people, yet here it would stand for many generations to come. This basically saying that the tower was some sort of magical device that was able to steal their ability to climb. Um, it's probably something more complicated than that, but essentially that is the effect of it. And this allows us, the players who come later, to obtain the power by getting through the tower. And this sort of lends to the idea that he made it a challenge because he wanted to make sure that the people were strong enough to claim the climbing ability, um, to make sure that they were the people that could end up saving the town. And that's pretty... It wraps up from there saying that this was basically a folk story. And um, that's a pretty in-depth look at everything that's said by the poem. Um, it's a very cool lore drop. And there are three new cosmetics, all with the general theme of climbing attire. One of which looks kind of like a Spider-Man shirt and I wish was out yesterday. So thank you for listening. If you have any more questions, let me know. Um, I'll see you.